welcome back to my messy workspace. What's been going on is I have been getting actually a touch frustrated with my collage approach. So I decided to switch gears and I'm working on what I believe is going to be a more complex, dare I say sophisticated collage project. So I'm collecting ephemera for that particular project and I get distracted by other wonderful images and that's how I will gain a lot of my ideas. So this has nothing to do with that big project that I may or may not be working on, but I'm grateful because it sparked other creativity, other collage ideas, and I'm just gonna work on those right now. One thing I have found when I am working on a major art project, I need to have other projects to go to so it renews my interest in the major project. Uh, I, something else I gained in art school. I just had a bunch of little projects going on, so I always came back fresh to my senior thesis project. Anyway, I got these images because I was hunting for images for the major collage project, and I'm going to work with this one. She's going to be my focal point. And harken back again to my old techniques, but I'll just show you in time lapse what I think I may be doing, what direction I may be going in. There is a trick to cutting out a perfect circle, and no circle that I have ever cut out is perfect, but I try to get as close as I can to it. What I like to do, obviously I'm cutting out the insides of these eyeglasses to add interest and maybe do something a little absurd, surreal. So what I like to do to cut out the circles, because I want to maintain the frame and that's going to be kind of de uh, delicate. So what I intend to do first is cut out this middle and keep the tensile strength going for the frame, which I need to maintain, but I'm going to lose in a little bit. So what I do is I draw an X in the circle. And of course that X gives us some little triangular pie images. See, It's just then a little easier to cut. And I do the best I can to pull my X-Acto knife along the edge. And here comes one piece free. It almost can act as an element of collage, but I'm probably gonna toss them. And again, just maintaining that edge along the frame of the glasses and the picture. I think I've used a lot of Fendi ads with eyeglasses, sunglasses, in my collages. I know I use a couple Tom Fords. I have one that I'm thinking about in particular and I'm happy to say I have several videos now up on this channel. I can't remember the names anymore. I have to rely on my editor to do that for me. Anyway, so you just cut along the edge and that's going to free up your your pieces and uh, you may want to hang on to those. So. Those are your fancy. So these sunglasses are a little different, but uh, I'm not going to cut them out yet. Now I'm just going to go ahead into the features. I like to cut out noses. They are tricky though, especially when it's frontal. I just basically have to decide what part of the nose I want to keep. The noses are tricky. My fellow artists out there, uh, we can probably also commiserate all Noses are actually also very difficult to draw. So this area is going to get very uh, delicate in a moment when I finish cutting out this nose because I want to keep the bridge of the eyeglasses intact. This I'm going to keep. I'm not going to keep it with the little scraps I just made. I'm going to put it off to the side. And I want to take the lips off as well. This is a technique I've shared before. I just haven't talked about it much because my earlier videos were all about removing the features first. 
So I can create a, a template of sorts with the face and just uh, mess around with I, uh, different types of papers and give her a new face. Oh, here we go, but I like to cut those features out very carefully. And what I also want to do is save this bottom portion of the face. I need it for reference when I return and I uh, when I return and fill in the blank. So I need to know where I'm going to be placing the nose and the lips again. And I now need to cut along the frame of the glasses and I've got to be careful. I don't want to lose them. But now we're dealing with very, very delicate paper. It's just a, the paper's not delicate, but the content is. So I'm trying to be really careful with this. I don't want to lose my glasses because she's my focal point, but what's going to make her my focal point are her glasses and what she sees out of them. That's the idea I have. And as you know, with my ideas, sometimes I go into a different direction. I think I want to keep her hair for now. So I'm just going to finish cutting out her face and we are definitely hanging on to this because I need guidance where I'm going to put her features back on. And if you try this technique and maybe you lose the template or you lose the piece, you know, don't worry about it because you can always put the nose and the mouth back in a different order. You can make it very, very unique. It doesn't have to be exactly as it was when it was living in the magazine. Okay. Here's a tricky part. I'm trying to cut. Okay. Ah, very nice. So we will hang on to that. And I also want to cut this upper portion. But all I'm going to have left of this is going to be the glasses in a moment. A little more delicate cutting just to clean it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just try to keep it as perfect as possible. Now I'm concerned about the bridge here, but it should be okay. Let's see what happens. Cutting along the bridge and cutting along these glasses because I want to remove the forehead. So I, again, I can play with other imagery for her face. I'm um, keeping the hair, so she's got some bangs going on here that are pretty significant. I'd like to keep those as much as I can. Hair is more difficult to maintain when it gets wispy like this. So I just make with what, what I have here. Okay, that wasn't too bad. I just make very delicate cuts. Okay, I'm going to go back to time lapse and I'm going to finish up these bangs and this forehead. <laughs> reason being is there is delicate area around it. This is what I do when I have to make a delicate cut. Number one, I really need to make sure this exacto is sharp. This one's pretty good, but it doesn't hurt to change it when you know you're going to make a very delicate cut. The sharper it is means you don't have to press down as hard. But when I uh, go ahead and proceed, I puncture the paper. I keep my finger away from the blade. I know it looks like I'm actually touching the blade and I follow it with my finger blade pulling away from my finger, but I'm holding the cut down to keep the paper stable so I can make a clean cut. This is also something I've shared before with vintage paper. It is very crumbly and sometimes this doesn't work and I really need to use scissors when I work with vintage paper. But if there's a delicate cut like this where an exacto needs to be utilized, it's not as easy. So here we go again, puncturing the paper, keeping it in place, going slow, pulling the knife towards me away from my fingers, but my fingers acting as a guide and holding 
a cut down. So I make the cut. After I make the cut, my finger holds it in place, holds it down, holds it steady as I continue to pull the X-Acto knife. And let's see, was that a good cut? Yeah, that was a pretty good cut. And it makes me proud. So I just kind of, if it's still stuck at a corner, maybe I'll give it a very gentle tug or I have to come back in with the knife. I'd rather do a nice clean tug and make sure that it's it's free and then come back maybe and clean up the edges. But this actually came out pretty good. I'm very pleased with this. So she's gonna have some bangs and I think I'm gonna allow her to keep this here. I'm gonna clean this up just a little bit. So now it's time to give her a new face and new eyeglasses. Now, do I want to do the glasses first? I was looking at this old text from a National Geographic. And I was thinking something along the lines of this for her, for her glasses or sunglasses. And I also had thought about the eyes on this gentleman from National Geographic. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut them free. Okay. Let's see how that looks. I was gonna use this text as the background. And now I'm looking at this and I'm wondering if perhaps it'll look a lot more interesting keeping his eyes. So I was gonna cut just his eyes out, but there's something soulful and expressive about the skin that is surrounding the eyes, especially this one. I really like that. I was going to use that instead. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I really wanna keep the expression around the eyes. It just says so much. And I'm gonna come in with it like this. So here is the first eye. I like the way that looks. But I'm gonna to need to cut. And I want to cut about here. I want it to look too awkward. Okay, maybe like this. So this is where it's gonna get a little tricky. I want the eyes like this. So I need to tape this down, but I'm gonna to have to do some cutting again. And I have to do cutting around a delicate area. So I'm gonna use packing tape. Hopefully this works, because this is kind of permanent. My hair is gonna be right here. Okay. Clip it on the side and just tape it on the back here, just on one portion of. Now, the thing is, is that I need to cut around the frame and up on the forehead, and it may mean I need to come in with my X-Acto to do that. And actually, I feel like it's a little crooked. Fortunately, this, is, this paper is a little tougher than, I don't want to be careful with it though. I, I don't like moving stuff around much, but I'd like it to look a little, ah, oh, I got stuck. Okay, I'd like it to look even. Okay, that's what I wanted. And got the tape right here, so I'm just sticking it down. Okay, that's good. So what I need to do, or what I like to do is I'm going to have to cut here, but it doesn't have to be exact because I'm not trying to save the rest of this image around the eyes, just the portion that I wanted. And I'm doing another cut. It just doesn't have to be super exact, but I still need to be careful. Same rule applies. So let's see, we're gonna lift this. It doesn't wanna come up. Okay, I'll just go ahead and work on this other side. So I don't want this forehead. I can almost just cut. It's gotta be exact around the frame. So I'm cutting exact around the frame. 
around that bridge right here, the, eye, the eyeglass bridge. I think that's what it's called. I'm sure there's a more technical term, but I'm not sure what it is. So cut along there, cut along the frame. Okay, that help. It's not moving, I don't know why. I can come in with the scissors a little bit here. This is delicate. Okay, that's what I wanted. I need to remove this it's still. It's probably from the tape. I may need to tape it again. See, the, the, I like using the packing tape because it's clean. Okay, see, yeah, the tape got in the way. The tape is right here. The tape is right there, and that's what I was trying to cut through. That's when, ta when packing tape is troublesome is when it interferes with cutting and then you're pressing really hard and when you press hard for a delicate area the chances of making a mistake become more profound go ahead and remove it. okay got i removed it that's good i'm going to trim this little bit off i don't think it's going to interfere or make a difference but i'm trimming it anyway just to keep things clean here is the forehead area I'm really glad the back of the page was just text and doesn't look too... It's easier to see my cuts. It's not interfering with my cuts as much. So I'm using the edge of my blade, just sawing through very slowly, very gently. It's all very, very delicate. Holding things in place. Okay, there we go. Let's see how it looks on the other side. Okay, we still need to remove this nose area, which means I need to do more delicate cuts to keep our frame in place, because it's very, very important. And along the nose, using that same technique I showed you before, just holding it down with my finger as I cut. Still, ooh, careful there. See, now I'm moving it. Okay, that happens. <laughs> and give it a little tug, or no, I'd rather cut. Let me look on the back. Okay. All right. Maybe a little messier than I like. Yeah, I can see a little bit of paper here. It's okay. Actually, what if what I can do, I can't do it yet because these eyes are connected and I don't have anything holding down the other the other eye. If I cut between the bridge here, if I just cut that, which I can, it's going to release that other eye and it's going to mess everything up. So I got to keep it like this for a minute until I give it a more secure background. This is all very, very delicate now, and I really need to take it easy. So I wanted to put this perhaps. Okay, that's not as much as I'd like. Uh, maybe this. I just wanted to give the eye the background of something that looks scripture. I could use other text, maybe. It might work better. I'd like to get that on as soon as possible. But I like the, the yellow because it's offering a really interesting contrast. So I don't know. I could just stay with that. Does it have to say anything? No, not really. Maybe something like this. So there's depth with the uh, with something of a black background. So I'm going to go ahead I want to do that, which means I'm just going to go ahead and, but then I'm going to have to make another cut here. Do I really want to do that? Not really. But I'll make a cut just so there's less to be worried about. Okay. I like that. 
place and I'm going to tape it again. I already had some tape ready to go. Right here. And I can see, I can see the back of my frame. I may not have to do any more crazy cutting if I didn't cut too much there. Um, okay, that's not too bad. I have to do some, uh, I don't have to do any real crazy cutting. Well, let's just do it anyway. Now, one thing that drives me nuts about dark backgrounds in National Geographic, when you make the cut, for some reason, somehow, some way, the inside of the paper shows and you can see a white line and I'm like, oh, I don't want that. Um, I, I just, it's just the ins, it's thick paper. So the inside of that paper is showing through when you cut that black paper down. Let's go ahead and make this cut. So when you cut into black paper, you're slicing through the inside of that paper. When it's thick like that, you're going to see the white line and it's not a great, it's not great, but it's inevitable because the paper was white. It looks like, I think I got it. I can't tell. But I can trim a little bit here just to make things easier. Okay. okay, that's not too bad. A little messy. I'm just going to come in here with my X-Acto and clean it up a little bit so we just see frame and no other part of that text, that kind of cool text. That's now the background for the eye. Actually, come in with my scissors. Gotta be careful here too. I'm being a little, I don't want to say reckless, but I'm being a little reckless because I'm dealing with a delicate area. I really should be just using my exacto. Sometimes I can't stand it though. I, I want to use my scissors. Okay. I like that. I like that how that came out. So let's continue and let's do some experimenting in time lapse. fallen in love with this piece of, for a background for another collage that was a fail. I love this. That being said, I want to use it for the background for her face, but if I do that, I have to cut it and that's pretty much the end of it. Eh, may as well just cut it. Yeah, I think this is what I want to do. And I removed the background on that eye that I worked so hard on because I just didn't like the way it looked. But I like this much better. I also want to create contrast because her features are very, very light. So I do want to create something of a contrast. So we're just going to go ahead and cut this, the uh, bit on the brutal side. Make sure I cut enough where we have what we need. I'm also looking, I have this text from a vintage magazine. Somehow felt like including it, but I don't think I want to. Get back there. No, it's not enough. It's it's great, but it's it's not enough. So I wanted to make sure I had the curve of the Q right here for the eye. Ah, and it's almost perfect, almost fits perfectly in the frame. So that's what I'm going for. This is what I want, want it to look like. I'm just going to go ahead and do a little trimming. Maybe keep this design for something else. I also cut up here. Can't cut too much. Let's 
go ahead and secure it with a little bit of tape at the bottom. Because I have to do a lot more cutting, and that may mean I am going to lose, lose my background. I don't want to cut here, below here. Well, but that's where I needed to cut. I didn't want to cut below there because once I do, I lose the tape. Well, I'm just gonna just gonna go ahead and cut. I'm gonna tape it on the sides here. Not a ton of tape. This tape is not easy to cut through, especially this packing tape. It's a really high quality packing tape. I like using that. Um, I'm sure opinions differ, but even when I do that, I'm gonna lose something. So. Let me go ahead and cut here. I want to keep that hand. I could use my exacto for this. I am not. And I am following this template that I cut out, the shape of her chin. Because I wanted to keep that. But I also want to keep the hair. I'm going to have to cut, cut around that hair. Okay, here's where I'm going to run into trouble with the packing tape again. Cut here, see if that works. And cut along the hand. Just following the natural curve of the hand. And just turning my paper to accommodate the scissors. The scissors isn't doing a lot of twisting and turning. I'm doing the twisting and turning. I'm doing the very gentle turns. Okay, toss that. And see, I there was tape right there, so I lost some of this. I need to be really careful now. In fact, I'm going to turn around and see. I need to tape some more down. And this is also probably a call for um, glue. Get some of my Mod Podge ready. And I'm just going to glue the hand here a little bit and try to be careful, don't use too much. Why? Because magazine paper, as most of you collages know, it, it can crinkle and wrinkle and whatnot. And I'm going to put a little bit on my frame because it keeps moving up. I'm going to have to put a lot more than that. I want to be careful with my glue right now. I, I can get very heavy handed with glue. I need depth brush. I can lift these eyes a little bit and make sure they are glued down and not have to worry about them anymore. Okay, there's that. So for this very delicate um, area with those frames again that are very important to me, I need to, I can, I need to apply glue just to be on the safe side. See, it wrinkled here a little bit. It's not too bad. It also moved, <laughs> moved a lot, but it's safer now than it was. Put that off to the side, and I can keep cutting a little bit more. I want to maintain her hair. Up. And we can get rid of this. Stay with the original frame crop, top of the head. And when this happens, when you have a little bit of, um, well, you can still see the background kind of going over the top of her head. I can either cut here or I can just go behind and cut it again, or I can come in with a my straight edge, which is right here next to me. <laughs> and I may as well do that just to make it clean. Go ahead and clean the area, grab my straight edge and give her a nice a straight edge cut with my X-Acto. And I want to be careful because we have those delicate bangs and I don't want to cut so much that the bangs go. And there we go. There we go. Nice clean cut. At least I hope so. Let's take a look. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's nice. Okay, that's not so bad. 
and we have some black and white hair I don't want to show on our hands. So I have to cut. I can use my scissors for that. There we go. Oh yeah, much better. Okay. Now the features, like I said, I was concerned with the original idea I had for the background, which were these lozenge windows, which are cool, but they're missing some, they're missing parts, and also it's too light. It was too light for the nose and the lips, way too light. I, I didn't care for that. So I wanted to offer more contrast. And we'll just go ahead and get our template and put her nose and her lips back on. I will use this as my guide. A little bit of glue, a little bit of a dab, just to keep it in place. I have to use glue here. Uh, kind of, there's no way you get around it. Uh, I mean, I imagine there are ways you can get around it and use like double sided tape. A lot of collage artists love using double sided tape. I haven't yet. I have used it and it is a really good tool. So it is something to think about. But you can use double edged tape or <laughs> double sided tape, not double edged. <laughs> okay. Let's remove our template. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. That's different. That's more different than it was to begin with. That's what we were going for, right? I think so. So now, what more do I want to do with her? I want to get rid of this red. Hopefully, I want it there. But the hair's troublesome. Yeah, this hair's going to be a problem. And I have a lot to cut through because we have layers now and you have to cut through those layers and that can be messy. I don't need to torture myself though. I can actually come in here and cut away the background, this thick background, because I don't need it. There's a little messy here. I can trim that edge while I'm, while I'm here. It's not going to be visible, so it's okay. Well, it is visible, and I'm going to have to come up with my exacto because it's just a little bit of an edge. It's not a big deal. Okay, it is a big deal. <laughs> it's not coming out as nicely as I want. There we go. I could give her a bob. Maybe she doesn't need this long hair. It doesn't really add anything, so let me just go ahead and give her a bob. to here and yeah eh. I like that I'm really giving her a bob now and I'm going to cut this background out along here. All right, she looks much different now. I'm just going to turn this away because it, again, doesn't add anything. There we go. So she looks a lot different. She looks more different than she did when we started the video. And she's got a lot going on, even though we didn't use too much ephemera. I'm not, not going to do too much more with her. But I was going to put the image on one of these French Alp pages. I don't know. It's... Um, maybe. See what I like about this is that the hand actually offers a lot of opportunity to tuck it in like we did with Head in the Clouds. We tuck the leg in to the landscape. You do something like that or maybe like this. Just 
becomes a little bit more surreal. They, it, my, my thing is I'm being really picky because I'm not seeing anything that's making making it seem like, oh, wow, this is so absurd and so surreal and just, um, I don't know. I think a landscape will work with this, but it's big. It's, uh, it, because it's the focal point, so I may need to use one of the major landscapes. That kind of looks cool because the gray in the graphic kind of works with this. Yeah, I'm going to use this. Why not? Go ahead and cut it out. All right. Again, grabbing my trusty straight edge. Plus I can use the picture itself, the picture frame. It looks pretty straight. I could, I wouldn't do it without a straight edge, but at least I don't have to worry about lining it up too much because it already has a straight edge. Okay. I want to keep this possibly. It's still, still intact. And we have the little gondola thing going on. So it looks, it looks a little more fun. And this is what I want to do. So I found a little bank of clouds and almost like Head in the Clouds. Gosh, now this one should be called Head in the Clouds because, well, it's a floating head in the clouds. So, well, we can call it maybe Head in the Clouds part two. And not only does this solve, solve this problem and makes it uh, more interesting, it also hides my messy glue when I do that. So I can do this. Seriously, this, I, I'm going to have to call this Head in the Clouds part two. I have to. It has to be done. And that makes it easier for me. Now it is a little heavy with just this. Or is it? Or should I just leave it alone? I don't know. I may have to sleep on this one too. I mean, Sometimes sleeping on things works, but uh, sometimes not. Okay, now it's secured pretty well. We have some sky going on here. I could cut more, do another straight edge cut. Want to line it up maybe and give it a trim. We're just going to do it. It's no big deal. Um, I mean, I want my collages to look good, and I hate wasting paper. I hate wasting ephemera. Do another cut. Well, it's minimal, all right. A little messy there. But this is when I, like, I rely on Photoshop also, because Photoshop will help me clean the edges by cropping it. You can do that with other programs too. Uh, a lot of the uh, photo programs that are like Photoshop have cropping features. I just like Photoshop for being able to change toning and give it, you know, give more vibrance to some of the colors. Okay, so is it done? Uh, maybe? I, I like this part probably. The, the most successful part feels like this. And this is where I start thinking, well, I need to add this, I need to add that. Um, I don't know. I don't know if anything else needs to be added. And I'm wondering about the side of her face. I don't, I don't like this part. Um, I'm just going to cut. Gosh. Oh, that's right. Okay. Okay. Okay, that looks weird. And I'm not sure if I want to add any more to this image with its with its background. I don't know if I want to because I don't want it to get busy. I've been 
getting really busy with some of my collages and I don't want this one to get busy. I think I'm just going to leave it alone for now. I will sleep on it and see if I need to add anything more to it, but I kind of like the way this one came off. So I think I'm okay with this and I'll leave it alone. So we have Head in the Clouds Part 2. Oh, here's this part. See, now this is where I'm like, okay, I want to start adding this. I want to start adding that. It might benefit from having a smaller element right here and... I'm going to, again, I'm going to sleep on it. I, it may or may not. It's probably fine just the way it is. And I was looking at these larger lips and thinking I should add those instead. But no, it's just that looks really weird. I, I don't know. I do not like the way that looks. I, uh -uh. Let's keep the regular lips there. Do I want to do this? No, I, I don't know. I'm going to, again, I'm going to set it off to the side, sleep on it, and see what happens. Because I, I usually benefit from a good night's sleep and looking at it with new eyes in the morning.